When you think of phones that look great and offer amazing specs, you usually think of phones like the Galaxy S series or the iPhones. Because let's be honest, while there are phones that are priced lower with great specs, they often come with compromises, especially with the build, the design, the looks. And of course, then there are phones that are cheaper, that come with great looks, but the specs, let's, let's not even go there. Now this is what surprised me the most about this phone. The Motorola Edge 30 Fusion is a phone I've been using as my primary for about a week now. And well, how do I put this nicely? I mean, uh, what surprises me the most about this phone is the fact that it's Motorola who made this. Now, I'm not saying this is a S22 or an iPhone 14 killer, because it definitely is not. But the way it's put together, this beautiful build alongside the top notch, almost flagship specs on the inside, at the price point that it's being offered at, it's fantastic. Now looks and on paper specs are in everything. If they were, we don't really need reviews, right? It kind of takes food off my table, so let's say they aren't. So in this video, let's go ahead, dig deep, and see how much of this awesome on-paper specs and flashy looks translate to actual day-to-day -day use. What's good with this phone, what's not really good? Let's find out. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech, and let's get started. So first, before we start, I just want to clear something up with the naming convention. Now last year, we had three Edge 20 series phones. We had the Fusion at the bottom, the Edge 20 above it, and the Pro up top. Now this year, Motors kind of rejigged that lineup. We get four phones, the H30 is the base now, the Fusion slots above it, then we have the Pro and they've also added an Ultra. This kind of made sense to me because a Fusion needs to be a mix of something, right? So ha having it in between a couple of other phones makes sense rather than it being a starter. Anyways, what this means is unlike the H20 Fusion, this one is more expensive, but it's also closer to a flagship. It's definitely in the upper echelons with regards to build and performance. Now the build here, while the H30 was slim and light, I've made it amply clear I was never a fan of that boxy design. The H30 Fusion improves on pretty much everything. The materials, instead of plastic, it's got metal to the sides, it's got Gorilla Glass 5 to the front and back, and Motul has done all this while still keeping it slim and light. The thickness here is just 7.45 millimeters. Now the display, it curves inwards and so does the back. So that means the actual area where you're holding this phone, the place that's resting against your fingers, that's much slimmer than that 7.45 millimeters. So it feels very, very sleek. And the fact that it weighs in at under 175 grams makes it a lot easier to hold this phone in hand and continue using it for a long time. Now, I also like the placements, the power and volume keys as expected are present to the right. This power button, it sits just about where you'd expect it to. It's easy to hit and it's also textured for you to be able to find it blind. The buttons themselves are clicky and tactile. We've got bold Dolby Atmos branding up top. The stereo speakers on this one, they get quite loud and the sound is also rich. As in the quality, even at higher levels, I mean. It's quite clean. There's nothing but the antenna bands to the left and to the bottom, we've got the primary speaker and microphone followed by a USB 3.1 Type-C port and a SIM tray. And as I'm sure you'd notice, there's a rubber grommet here to help the H30 Fusion attain a IP52 rating. So a few splashes here and there shouldn't make a difference. And Motorola continues to support a lot of 5G bands 13 here. And the call quality, cellular reception, I had no issues with it in my time with the H30 Fusion. Now to the back, we've got a matte finish that helps keep fingerprints at bay. And also increasing the comfort factor is the width. Now guys, this here is an iPhone 14. The iPhone 14 has a 6.1 inch display. The H30 Fusion, on the other hand, has a 6.55 inch display. Despite the much larger panel, the width is almost the same. That said, this is a taller display, so reaching the opposite corner when you're using the phone single-handed, now that's gonna need some finger gymnastics, but it's manageable. Overall, I felt pretty comfortable holding and using this phone single-handed. Now buried underneath this display is an optical fingerprint scanner that's pretty quick, accurate, and responsive. The other biometric option is face unlock via the 32 megapixel selfie camera that you find in this hole punch right up top. Now, despite the high megapixel count, the selfies themselves were pretty average. There's nothing particularly wrong with them. It gets the job done without really standing out in any way. Now, circling back to this display, this here is a 6.55 inch POLED panel with a full HD plus resolution and 144 Hz refresh rate. This display, it's a pleasure to use. The high refresh with capable hardware underneath makes day-to-day -day operations smooth AF. This panel is also pretty color accurate with a peak brightness of 1100 nits. So using it outdoors, no issues. This BT Dub is a 10-bit panel, this HDR10 plus support. On the flip side, what it does lack is LTPO technology. By that, I mean it can't drop down to one or even 10 Hertz. 
Manually, you get to choose between 60 and 144 hertz as refresh rate options. I would have personally liked to see an in-between, maybe 90 or even 120 would have been fine. But then if you set it to auto, the phone by itself switches between 48, 60, 90, 120 and 144 hertz, depending on what's going on on screen, what's the requirement. To be fair, I don't see the lack of LTPO being a major issue since the battery life pretty stellar. So the H30 Fusion, it sports a 4400 mAh battery on the inside, and this easily lasted me through a day of moderate to heavy use. Even on days where I used the GPS heavily, was testing out the cameras and spent a lot of time watching videos. Now this is kind of what I would term as heavy use. Even on these kind of days, I managed to end up with 20 to 30% left in the tank, which is frankly quite impressive. Now, if you need a quick top up, Motorola does include a 68 watt charger in the box. It can get you from zero to 100 in about 40 minutes flat. I also like how Motorola hasn't gone for any proprietary technology with this charger. It's just a power delivery standard. So if you have one of those ultra portable laptops that support 65 watt charging via type C, you could actually use this exact charger to charge it. Now moving on, great build, excellent display, strong battery life, all those would be for naught if the Fusion didn't have the hardware chops to back it up. Thankfully, Motorola has ND delivered here in spades. At the center of it all is a Snapdragon 888 Plus SoC, Qualcomm's 2021 flagship chip, which keeps everything up and running smoothly. Now this chip, it's paired with 8 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM and 128 gigs of fast UFS 3.1 storage. And we've been seeing a lot of the 888 and the 888 Plus, so it's no surprise that this phone is capable of running pretty much anything thrown at it with ease. Now we have been seeing a lot of the 888 and the 888 Plus, so yay, we all know that this chip, it's developed a kind of bad rap with respect to heating and thermal throttling. Personally, I feel it's been blown way out of proportion. There is something there, I'm not saying no, but it's not as bad as some, some people would like you to believe. But if you have concerns, well, rest easy, my friend. Despite the sleek form factor, Motorola has managed to keep the H30 from overheating, even with sustained usage. A 15 minute CPU throttle test ended with the Fusion retaining 92% of its peak performance. Now, that's for the CPU. GPU wasn't as good. With the 3 Mark Wildlife Extreme stress test, we ended up with a stability score of 68% after 20 continuous loops. It's not the best result we've seen, but at the same time, it's far from the worst we've seen. It's actually pretty good for a phone that has leak AF as a USB. Now, from a thermal perspective, at no point did the H30 Fusion get uncomfortably hot. Sure, it gets warm when you push it constantly, but never to that point where it felt hot and I felt uncomfortable using it. Now with day-to-day -day use, it's smooth sailing. Motorola's MyUX is pretty much stock Android with a few tweaks done right. Nifty extras like Ready for Support are built in. Old ones that we love like the flashlight gesture or the quick launch of the camera, those gestures are still present and there's pretty much no bloat on first boot. Moto's left almost everything untouched here. Outside of a Pixel, this is probably the stockest software experience you're gonna get. While the interface has never been a pain point for Motorola, what has been would be updates. Moto's kind of trying to change that narrative here. The promise is two years of software version updates, three years of security patches, and fingers crossed, they follow through on it, and this is the year where they help change that perception. Anyway, with that said, let's now move on to optics. There's a triple camera setup. The primary is a 50 megapixel sensor paired with an f1.8 lens that's optically stabilized. Images as evident by these samples, they turned out pretty good. Well detailed, accurate colors, even under low light, the performance isn't bad. It's actually pretty decent, but I'm not a fan of how Motorola's night mode works. Looking at these side by sides, I'm sure you can notice there's not a lot of difference between the regular shots and the night mode ones. Typically, with phones these days, we see a day and night difference here, no pun intended. But with the H30 Fusion, I feel Moto's leaving a lot of performance on the table. Low light performance, which isn't bad to begin with, if they can improve that night mode, they should be able to get even more out of this hardware. For video, we can shoot at up to 8K at 30 FPS or 4K at 60, which is my preferred resolution frame rate combo, what I tested a lot, and the footage, pretty stable, excellent detail, great colors, solid dynamic range. The secondary camera is a 13 megapixel ultra wide with a 120 degree field of view. The colors are reasonably matched with the primary and it was fine. This has autofocus, so also doubles for macros. The third sensor is a two megapixel depth and here's where the cost cutting, this not being a proper flagship really comes into play. So there's not really much to talk about with respect to the sensor. What we do have a lot to talk about is the pricing. Well, the H30 Fusion is officially priced at 4299, but has an initial launch price of 3999. Now guys, what makes this phone really awesome? Cause you know, it's not 
very unusual to see a spec heavy phone price so aggressively but it is very very unusual to see a phone like this you know which doesn't at every point make you wish or make you regret not paying more and getting something more expensive well yes there are things this phone doesn't have for example compared to a proper flagship it doesn't have the latest snapdragon 8 or 8 plus gen 1 it doesn't have an ip68 rating it doesn't have wireless charging or even a telephoto camera for that matter but those kind of feel superfluous, like a luxury, the basics, what's required, what makes you feel like you have a good solid phone in hand. It has all that. Good optics, check. Great battery life, check. A fast charger included in the box, check. Solid performance with the 888 Plus, excellent high refresh display, and a build that feels just as premium as phones priced much, much higher check and check again. And that, in my humble opinion, makes the H30 Fusion an easy recommend, especially if you're someone who likes sleek phones. Now, with sleek phones, there are a lot of caveats that come along with it, that come along with buying a sleek phone, and Motorola somehow sidestepped all that. So whether you want a high-performance sleek phone or just great bang for your buck, Motorola seems to have nailed it with the H30 Fusion. And that's my take on this phone. So what do you guys think about the H30 Fusion? Do you see yourself getting one if you're in the market to pick up a phone in this price segment? If not, what do you think is better than this? Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, while you're down there, thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about this video. Subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks for your time, thanks for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash, you've been watching C4E Tech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day, bye-bye.